You see, Harold, I feel that much of the world's sorrow comes from people who are this, yet allow themselves to be treated as that. Well, I think it's fine building jumbo planes. Yeah, it's a mysterious thing about how music is so powerful. I believe it's something to do with kind of the, the, the longing that human beings have for unification with something higher and more harmonious than their existence and their mundane lives. And wanting to grasp that somehow becomes possible through the vehicle of music. Tell me, where do the children play? Growing up in the West End of London, you know, obviously affected me by having so much, you know, theater and musicals and, and uh, coffee bars with, with jukeboxes blaring out. I mean, that, that was like, music was the background to my life. And at first I wanted to be an artist, so I used to spend hours and hours painting, but I'd always have like a record playing. It used to be my sister's collection bit of Frank Sinatra, a little bit of Tchaikovsky. And then, of course, the Beatles came along and the whole powerful, you know, explosion of self-expression and liberation, in a way, for my generation began. And I wanted to be with it. I picked up, if you like, a f the folk sort of style in the beginning because, you know, it was so simple. I didn't need a band, I didn't need uh, drums or anything like that, just me and the, uh, the guitar. My whole ambition really was to express myself now in, uh, in words and music, and, and it was just natural. I just didn't think twice. But learning music was frightening to me because it might stop the flow of creativity, and I didn't want to be held down by technical issues. You know, I wanted to just write with flow. I kind of learned things myself. You know, and, and I'd kind of work out the chords to something. And then when I couldn't learn, I was like, forget it, I'll write my own song. <laughs> you know, that's why I never sang anybody else's songs. I thought, you know, I never made any mistakes that way. I was always, uh, you know, painting pictures and telling stories my, with my songs. And so it was kind of natural that I wanted my songs a lot of the time to be seen as well. And uh, originally I wanted you know, to write a musical, writing about the Russian Revolution. You know, it was a story of Nicholas and Alexander. And so uh, I always used to be driving back across my manager you know, to try and get my musical on, <laughs> on stage. But then <clears throat> um, films were the next thing. So um, he came to me one day with the script uh, about Harold and Maud, you know, and I, I thought, well, yeah, that's a good idea, because films, you know, great extension. So um, and I started reading this script and I was bowled over by the by well, the humour of this, it was so dark, and was very similar to my, my kind of humour. And he said that this, uh, this director, you know, was interested in some of my music, so um, he seemed to be living with these two albums, you know, Mona Bone Jack and, and Tea for the Tillerman. And I, th I think when he made the film, looking at the rushes, uh, he never stopped playing my records at the time, you know, he kept on putting on my records while he was watching the film. And so it became a kind of indelible part of, of the vision that he saw. So off long ago, the seconds tip the time out. There's so much left to know when I'm on the road to find out. I think my music had a particular leaning towards the kind of whole subject of the film, which was to do, in a way, with, um, you know, faking one's death, you know, or, or you know, playing with the, the idea of, um, of death, the whole idea that you're going to, you know, leave this planet. And so there are threads of similarity in just the, the approach um, which, you know, Harold had towards life, which was, you know, to, um, to get as close as possible to the edge, to find out something, you know, that he, he didn't know. But I was a, a little bit cautious, I said, but hang on, this is a comedy and my music is quite serious, you know. I take it quite seriously, so... Um, the juxtaposing of songs, you know, in film, uh, it's kind of dangerous business because as a writer, you know, you've got your own vision <laughs> and along comes a director who kind of sees it in this other way. And um, 
I wasn't certain if we were going to do this or we were going to say yes. So he really wanted to convince me, Hal wanted to convince me that this was the right thing. So he invited me to San Francisco where they were filming it and, and watching the rushes. And then, you know, we were sitting in there as he was puffing on his little whatever it was. And um, he's saying, look at this. And then, you know, and there was, I think it was Miles from Nowhere and The Hearst, you know, and I went, oh, that's good. I won't need it when I reach the end. There's that great moment where it doesn't describe what's going on, and it shouldn't in some way, but there's a spirit, there's a meaning, there's something so subtle about the core of that song, which, which hits that string and that scene. It tells you everything about it. And there, there, is, there was some kind of real synergy also with the kind of strange, sadistic humour, dark humour, which I kind of had as a kid as well. So I kind of recognised all this rebelliousness and, and wanting to turn things upside down and not accept, you know, what, uh, what the great world was telling me and um, immediately fell into the dream. And I respected, you know, his choice because actually he chose some pretty powerful songs, you know, Trouble, amazingly, Fitted that, that moment with um, Harold. I have seen your face, and it's too much for me today. Trouble, oh, trouble, can't you see? You have made me a wreck, now won't you leave me in my misery? And so he just wanted some other songs that perhaps unique to the to the film and that's why I went off and did those other two songs don't be shy and uh, if you want to sing out you know the writing of songs is a kind of a mysterious thing and and uh, it usually starts with me though uh, with a riff and a mood and maybe a couple of words and a chorus you know I might have want to sing out sing out and and that might be it you know um, and then it would come, you know, then it would kind of speak of itself uh, as to what it should be. The words would have to fit the whole style and mood of the song and the music. I'd probably have gone over to him and with a couple of, you know, lines, we want to be free, be free, you like it? You know, yeah, okay. And then I'll finish the rest of the you know, song. Uh, don't be shy, hmm. I think that again was very similar, you know, just a chorus and then I'd go away and finish the rest of the words. And then I went into the studio, which was in uh, San Francisco, uh, Wally Hyder's, and we did these demos, you know. They say, he said, that's great. I said, well, well don't worry, I'll, I'll record them properly. And, and my whole intention was to go away and to do this. But of course, then the whole wrap up of the film happened and suddenly it was out. And I thought, and I was, I was kind of a little bit upset about that because I wanted to do the songs properly. You know, the songs they, they finally used were kind of the, the original demos. Uh, they might have been uh, dollied up a little bit, but uh, they were still the same kind of rough pieces of work which I, I meant to finish. But, you know, it came out and everybody wanted to, to have the, uh, the soundtrack. I said, no way, you know, because I never finished those songs. And so I was always very particular about the way in which, you know, the thing was finally produced. And I always felt that Don't Be Shy, if you want to sing out, we're never finally Just produced. Don't wear fear, or nobody will know you're there. Just lift your head and let your feelings out instead. Now don't be shy, just let your feelings roll on by, on by, on by. You know, love is better than a song. Love is where all of us belong. So don't be shy, just let your feelings roll on by. Don't wear fear, or nobody will know you're there. You're there, you're there. You're there, you're there, you're there. I always felt that my music should have been used more in films, and I think this was just one of the most uh, 
or appropriate moments in, in, in my musical history where it happened perfectly. And when that happens, when there's that striking moment of creativity where, you know, when two talents come together, um, the visionary of the director and the music, and of course the artists and the actors themselves. But when that happens really perfectly, then it's memorable, you know. And if you want to be high, be high. If you want to be low, be low. Because there's a million ways to go. You know that there are. And if you want to be me, be me. If you want to be you, be you. Because there's a million things to do. You know that there are. Now, join in. Wrong.